Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Weary Weekly History and Entertainment News. August is typically known as the dog days of summer, but in the time of COVID, it has been a dog day year so far, with seemingly no end in sight. This episode will discuss how movie theaters have hit a snag in their opening, as well as how the theater world, like Barrington Stage Company, has been forced to change their plans. On a more positive note, I'll be on location at the Baseball at the Berkshires Museum in Dalton. First, it's time for this week's trivia question, which will be answered at the end of the show. This week's question is, where was Berkshire Community College originally located before it moved to its current location at 1350 West Street in Pittsfield? Now, for this week's local entertainment headlines. On last week's episode, I discussed how Regal Cinemas in Lanesboro and Beacon Cinemas in Pitchfield were hoping to open by August 21st. Unfortunately, there have been major hiccups in the reopening process. First, Massachusetts is not opening any of their Regal movie theaters. As it is among the lowest COVID-19 cases in the country, opening theaters now could put Massachusetts back in dangerous limits. With Governor Baker's decision to limit outdoor gatherings, movie theaters may not be a good thing to open up. Also, upstate New York Regal theaters are closed for that same reason. Neither state wants a situation similar to what's going on in Florida, which, incidentally, has decided to open up all of its Regal cinemas. Clearly, it's a state-by-state -state process at this time. Beacon Cinemas in Pittsfield also hit massive complications. They cannot open at this time, even though their Google search says otherwise. In a Facebook conversation I had with the theaters, they gave a full explanation of why they cannot open yet, stating, quote, Currently at the Beacon, we can open at 25% capacity, but we cannot sell concessions. We calculated operating expenses, and we realized we would lose more money by opening than keeping the theater closed under those restrictions. Being a small business, we have to keep those concerns in mind." End quote. Phoenix Theaters, which owns the Beacon, also owns theaters in Iowa and Michigan. The Iowa Theater opened on August 28th with 50% capacity, but the Michigan Theater remains closed. So again, Phoenix Theaters is opening on a state-by-state -state basis. WWHEN is determined to bring you the latest updates on the reopening of movie theaters in Berkshire County. Even though the major movie theater chains are closed in Berkshire County, there is still an excellent chance to see a big movie on demand. Bill and Ted Face the Music was released on August 28th. The long-awaited threequel to the popular 1989 movie and its 1991 sequel features the not-so-bright heroes Bill and Ted, who must attempt to save the world by traveling through their famed time machine. This movie once again stars Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter, but what makes this movie unique is how it is being released. Producers of Bill and Ted Face the Music realized that some states were opening their theaters while others were remaining closed. Releasing this movie to everyone was going to be a challenge, so they decided that this movie would drop two ways. For states that were reopening, the movie would be going to theaters as planned. However, states like Massachusetts aren't allowing movie chains to open yet, so Bill and Ted Face the Music will be coming on demand as well, which should cost approximately $20. It's a win-win situation for everyone during this very difficult time. In some breaking news, Barrington Stage Company announced that they had to switch the bulk of its entire outdoor programming from live and in-person to digital. This was in response to Governor Baker's order to reduce outdoor gatherings from 100 people to 50. This will affect three cabaret performances and three plays. Artistic director 
Julianne Boyd, expressed disappointment with the news, stating, quote, We want to do theater to reach people, but there really comes a point when you can't do theater for 50 people, especially when you don't know what the weather will be. We were able to adapt Harry Clark for the outdoor space, but these other plays are really meant for indoors, end quote. Here is a list of the shows that were affected, as well as their backup plans. Leslie Critcher, Is It Over Yet? was moved to August 30th, and it was the last show at the tent outside the grounds of the Polis Community Club at 55 Linden Street. Marilyn May, Party Time, was postponed to a date that is still to be determined. Anne Hampton Calloway, the Linda Ronston songbook, was canceled. Instead, Calloway held the concert at her home on August 31st and September 1st. The play Eleanor will be streamed on September 4th and 5th, instead of being shown at the main stage. Those who had tickets to see Eleanor in person will be sent an online link instead. Three viewings will now have a special preview available online from September 23rd through the 26th. Finally, Arthur Miller's The Price has been postponed indefinitely. Throughout this whole COVID-19 ordeal, Boyd stated the two major takeaways she has learned from the 2020 season. Quote, one is that the world is rapidly changing and two, we have to be patient, end quote. WWHEN appreciates Boyd's and Barrington Stage Company's resilience during this very difficult time. The Downtown Pittsfield Ambassadors Program will end its 2020 season on Labor Day. This program is a partnership between Downtown Pittsfield Incorporated and the Pittsfield Police Department. In addition, they are sponsored by the City of Pittsfield Guardian Life Insurance, Company of America, Lee Bank, and Pittsfield Garden Tours. This program addresses increased visitor presence during the summer and helps to relieve the demand on police presence downtown. This year, the program focused on Pittsfield's response to COVID-19 by providing masks to people that did not have them, picking up trash, and helping guide foot traffic to places to eat and shop. The ambassador's job is twofold, focusing on concierge service and safety. Additionally, ambassadors are trained and certified by the Pittsfield Police Department in CPR, AED, first aid, and public safety protocol. Ambassadors observe street activity and, when needed, called for assistance via police radios, with which they are equipped. 2020 ambassadors were met returnees Melvin Wright and Amari Starr, and newcomers Alex DeRosiers and Liam Tremlett. WWATN thanks the Downtown Pitchfield Ambassadors Program for their hard work this summer. I'm here outside at our next location, the Baseball at the Berkshire's exhibit. It is located at 63 Flansburg Ave in Dalton at the former Crane Stationery Building. We'll be taking a tour of some of the fashion of this fascinating museum and make connections towards America's pastime and the Berkshire's. This exhibit has had many different locations during its five years. These have included the Berkshire County Historical Society, Sheffield Historical Society, Country Club of Pittsfield, Lenox Historical Society, and the Berkshire Mall before it closed last year. Now it hopes that this location will be permanent and or it will try to find another permanent location. According to its website, its mission is to present exhibits and educational programs that will assist in telling the story of baseball in the Berkshires. Not only that, 
but it also describes how baseball in the Berkshires affected baseball in a wider American sense. I'm at the beginning of the Take Me Out to the Ball Game exhibit, one of the museum's most widely visited spots. Did you know that 38 Major League players that were born in Richfield played in the Major Leagues? They have, they have included well-known names such as Jeff Reardon, Turf Wendell, Mark Bellinger, and Hall of Famers Frank Grant and Jack Chesbro. The baseball at the Berkshires exhibit contains all of these players, but also features some people who worked in the front offices, such as Dan Duquette. Currently, there are many different exhibits on display. These include famous bats and gloves used by athletes, documents about early games held in Pittsfield, the history of Wakona Park, and many different local connections to the game. This museum also gives the story of how the first documented game of baseball was held in Pittsfield and how it was only discovered in 2004. The Baseball in the Berkshires exhibit was funded by many different businesses, including Raylock Federal Credit Union, Berkshire Bank, Mountain One, and Camp Hart. Others are listed at the museum's website. Baseball in the Berkshires is open every Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. This museum is free but accepts donations. So please donate upon your business to keep the museum open. The main entrance is in the rear of the building, right next to the parking lot. Appointments can be made also for weekend visits by calling Larry Moore at 413-822-6738. Visitors must wear masks and follow social distancing guidelines. Now back over to my studios for more Weary Weekly History and Entertainment News. It's now time for this week's history portion of WWHEN, which also provides the answer to this week's trivia question. As a reminder, this week's question was, where was Berkshire Community College originally located before it moved to its current location at 1350 West Street in Pittsfield? The answer is Old Central High School at 99 Second Street. Today, this is now the back building located at the First Street Common Park used for housing. In 1958, then Massachusetts Governor Foster Ferculo signed legislation creating the Massachusetts Community College System. BCC became the first established Massachusetts Community College. Two years later, on September 15, 1960, BCC held its opening ceremony and welcomed its first class at the Second Street location previously discussed. The first full graduation ceremony took place in 1962. BCC grew exponentially in the 60s and 70s and the Second Street location was proving to be way too small. On January 21st, 1972, BCC officially began classes at its current location at 1350 West Street. BCC continued its growth. Classes were offered at a second location at 343 Main Street in Great Barrington. These classes consist of mostly general education classes like math, history, and English. In 1994, BCC created the Berkshire Institute of Lifelong Learning, today part of a chapter of the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute, or OLE. OLE allows senior citizens to participate in social and intellectual opportunities provided through classes, lectures, and trips. The BCC OLE program is one of only four in the nation to be associated with a two-year college. Today, BCC is known for being a place to receive a great education while keeping one's student debt low or non-existent. The most popular majors today at BCC are nursing, liberal arts, computer science, biology, and criminal justice. 
It also has agreements with Massachusetts College of Liberal Arts for transfer credits after graduation. Some of the more fascinating alumni include singer Matt Cusson, who has toured with artists such as Christina Aguilera and has performed at the Apollo Theater in Harlem, and Christopher Hodgkins, a former Massachusetts House of Representatives member who served for 20 years. However, alumni of Berkshire Community College are all around Berkshire County. Due to its longevity, great education, and low cost, people of all ages have started their education at BCC, including yours truly. I'm a 2015 graduate with degrees in liberal arts and theater arts. That ends this week's episode of Weary Weekly History and Entertainment News. You can watch this week's episode on PCTV Channel 1301, CTSB TV Channel 1301, and NBC TC Channel 1301. Air times on all three of these networks vary. Visit the website shown here for more information. Next week, I'll be wrapping up the summer portion of WWHEN with where we've been and where the fall will take us from here. Thank you.